Hey fellow tennis nerds and welcome to this Hazel Racket review. Perhaps you've seen my post on tennisnerd.net or you listened to the podcast with Jeffrey Ye from Hazel Rackets. He and his uh, co-founder David Willis started this brand a few years ago. It's picked up a little bit of speed now. They have uh, Henri Leconte as an ambassador for the Hazel Tour 100. They have three rackets in total, Hazel Tour 90H, which is my favorite, Hazel Tour 100, and the Hazel Oversize, which is a lighter extended frame, which is more suitable for uh, beginner players or perhaps veteran players with shorter swings. David and Jeffrey, they're both tennis nerds. Uh, their day job is within dentistry, uh, but they wanted to kind of pursue their dream and start a tennis brand, and uh, Hazel was founded. Uh, they have uh, a few rackets, as I said. They do a uh, poly string and a multi-filament string. They sell some bags, grips, and so on, and they're trying to build their brand. They're a small company now. The rackets are made in Taiwan. Uh, due to quality control uh, issues with the made in China, they said, and that they found a manufacturer there that can offer a pretty good quality control, plus minus five grams or so. They do offer that the rackets will be within uh, one gram and one uh, 0 0.1 balance point. So that's um, one of the best quality controls in the business. They do this uh, thanks to adding lead to the frame. So they have a high modulus graphite frame that they add lead to to get it up to the specs of their um, their two their three racket models. Uh, so it's a pretty raw frame. There are no real fancy technologies involved. It's, um, it's all blacked out. It's more about the performance and not so much about the marketing or, or the tech included in the frame. Uh, their, their standpoint there is that uh, this is kind of what the pros use. They use these older kind of non-technology frames and they wanted to kind of create a brand like this. Uh, and something they would happily use themselves. Uh, Jeffrey is a master racket technician. He has strung at the Australian Open and other big tournaments, and he knows how to customize frames really well. So they take great pride in their products. I was a little bit skeptical, as I'm always am, as I always am with rackets, with marketing. I've been in marketing for uh, many, many years, and that's my profession mainly. And I'm a tennis enthusiast, as you know. But I've also been switching rackets and testing rackets for many, many years. Uh, so I've seen everything. I've seen a lot of technology claims that are not even there. I've seen some technology claims that actually work. Uh, but the rackets have not really moved a huge uh, stride forwards, uh, to be honest, in technology. It's going a bit back and forth, and it depends all on, your, on you as a player what you like from the feel. Uh, it could be very dampened, it could be very raw and uh, true, or it could be um, something in the middle. So it all, all depends on you as a player. Uh, that's the key point. Me, I, I definitely like... Uh, more of a of feedback from the racket. I like a more old school feel. I don't like too much dampening. I don't really feel the ball. Um, so that's that's my personal opinion. Uh, I do find sometimes that I enjoy rackets that have a bit more tech involved, more dampening, a bit stiffer, a bit more powerful, like was the case with the FX500 from Dunlop that I reviewed um, in, the, in the most recent review I did on YouTube. But I must say, for, for these two frames, uh, I've really fallen in love with the 98. It's a racket I really enjoy. Very, very uh, nice feel. It The stiffness is 64, so with strings, that takes it down to 61, which gives it that kind of pocketing of the ball that's uh, not super noodly or plush, but just about right for me. That's what I like in a frame. It uh, reminds me of, of a pro stock blade, that I reviewed a while back, uh, the Pro Stock Wilson Blade that I really felt was uh, was uh, great in the way it attacked the ball, had a nice sound, gave me some control from the tight 98 uh, square inch and 1820 string pattern, uh, but was also pretty powerful. You can get uh, get some juice on your shots, not as much as you do with a 100 square inch racket normally, 
but that kind of uh, fell right in my spec range. And uh, the Hazy Rackets is not a really a boutique brand like Angel and Dacor, where you can kind of get your uh, design customized and um, and change the specs. They have two main models, I would say, the Tor 100 and Tor 98, and the oversized and for uh, beginners. The unstrung specs of the Hazel 100 Tour is 300 grams, 22 millimeter beam, so a pretty thin beam for this type of racket, 64 RA stiffness rating, 1619 string pattern, 32.3 centimeter balance. It's just slightly longer for that uh, double handed uh, player at 27.1 inches. The price point is pretty good. Uh, it's 150 euros or 180 US dollars or 250 Australian dollars. They're based in Australia, as you know. Uh, this includes custom stringing and a free overgrip and vibration dampener, so a pretty good deal. They made high modulus graphite. They're all matte black, so uh, if you like a very colorful frame, that this might not be for you, but if you like a classy timeless design, this could be working really well. Uh, so the differences between the two rackets are not huge. The Hazel 98 Tour has a similar 300 gram weight, 22 millimeter beam, 64 RA, but an 1820 string pattern for more control and a 32 centimeter balance. Uh, I've added a bit of weight on the Tour 98 because uh, I felt like I need a little bit more pop, so I added around 3-4 grams at 12 o'clock and then it was spot on for me. I really love this frame. It's uh, definitely something I could take into a, a tournament. First hit, I was a bit so-so, but when the, the tension dropped a little bit and I started to you know, get used to the frame, I really enjoyed that kind of medium crisp feel. It uh, has a nice sound when I hit the ball, and um, I also like the string that they strung it up with. I didn't restring the racket. It's strung with the Hazel Tor Blue, which is their poly string, and that's uh, kind of middle ground uh, control oriented poly, which uh, I really found worked well in this frame. Uh, so this is a winner for me, the 98 Tor. I also like the 100 Tor uh, that Henri Leconte uses. Um, that was uh, had obviously similar feel and playability as the 98, but I like the tighter string pattern and the slightly faster, smaller head shape. That's um, more in my my style of play these days. So really a great frame. I didn't try the 107 oversize, but I can give you the specs, the 245 grams and uh, 107 square inches, obviously a 36.5 centimeter balance, so quite head heavy, 22 millimeter beam, 27.5 inch length slightly uh, excel that is 1619 string pattern is a bit lower price point on this one 130 euros 210 australian dollars or 150 usd so a large sweet spot extra reach uh, players looking for easy power definitely was positively surprised by this brand and uh, i didn't think i would like them that much i've seen and tried some new brands uh, and generally their products are pretty good, I would say. It's just that feeling that the quality control of these smaller brands is much better than the bigger manufacturers who kind of mass produce frames and uh, after frame. Uh, while in this case you can actually get your swing weight proper and you can get, um, get the specs up to what you like. Uh, it actually makes a big difference, I think, and it's something I can really recommend checking out these smaller brands such as Hazel. Uh, Angel is another good option, Dacor, uh, you, you get good quality control, nice quality frame, you, you know what you're getting, I think that's what I'm getting at here, you actually you have a sense that this is what the spec I'm going to get, you can have a direct line with the manufacturer, might take longer to, to get, get you the frame, you can go out into the store and buy it, you need to buy it through them, through their website, but in the end you get a, a, a quality uh, assurance in specs that I think is really worth worth it uh, so that's uh, that's a big plus in my mind i really like to have my specs um, on par and i also like to have the option to get two or three um, matched rackets which i can get with hazel and that uh, that really gives me a peace of mind when i'm playing tournaments and so on so a um, really positive experience so far uh, with Hazel and uh, I will take the 98 now into my next tournament uh, I'm not uh, you know ATP player by any means, but I play these open tournaments 
managed to get to the quarters in the last tournament I played. A bit lucky draw, maybe. Really feel confident that the 98 suits my game enough that I know where the shots land and, and uh, I can generate some pop with that one. Like the Tour 100 as well, but the 98 was more my style of racket. I definitely recommend you to check out these Hazel frames. Um, really solid frames. Uh, talking a little bit, comparing the 100 versus the 98, they're very similar, but you get a bit more spin potential with the 100. Uh, it also has kind of a gravity style head shape, so the sweet spot is pretty generous with that one. Uh, and the spin as well and it's kind of like an, a pretty open pattern for for extra spin potential a little bit too much for me i like to have a bit of a more controlled launch angle which i get with the 98 although i did like them both the 100 is a bit easier to use uh, has a bit bigger sweet spot so that's a nice one too uh, definitely a competitor to a gravity line or other kind of softer uh, 100 square inch rackets perhaps the clash and and those lines if you're if you're interested in a new brand to try check out the hazel one uh, but the tour 98 is the one i prefer you don't get a huge amount of pace from either of these two frames um, especially not with the 98 it's quite low powered still it's a bit more pop i would say kind of like an old k blade 98 uh, I added the, some weight to mine to make it a little bit more potent. 336.6 grams and 33.1 centimeter balance and a 332.5 swing weight is the spec I ended up with. It works well in stock form. They have tried it plenty with, uh, with uh, more advanced players than I am. But this is the spec that I landed on that I really felt makes the racket 100% justice. I really feel like I can hit hard with it it's not too um unforgiving with the sweet spot it's not it's pretty maneuverable but i have this a little bit more uh, swing weight a little bit more um weight on my shots and um really enjoyed that from the back of the court i enjoyed it hitting volleys uh, it was a good on on the slice uh, i always try to think of all these areas when i review a racket I couldn't get an, as much pop on as I do with, for example, the new Technifiber racket or, or the FX500 from Dunlop was the serve. I, I have to place the serve a bit more. I don't have the best serve. I'm pretty short guy, so I, I need extra help. I uh, could potentially at some point switch to an extended length frame, but I've never felt 100% comfortable with extended rackets. Uh, so the trade-off is not really there, but I would like a bit more pop, uh, but it's not that easy to get with these control-oriented frames. So the serve is the only... Thing where I, I would like a little bit more the rest of the game uh, feels great with this frame um, from the back up to the net uh, and uh, in no man's land so uh, very happy with the hazel rackets uh, surprised me quite a bit not so much creativity in uh, marketing tech or in paint jobs but it's a product that most tennis nerd will enjoy because it's just blacked out on spec nice feel and pocketing uh, ready to go works for a lot of different players whether you like the 100 or the 98 and um, Really nice to see these smaller brands challenge the big dragons I think it's about time especially with quality control uh, That's become such a huge issue now uh, I'm talking to players all the time that keep getting a bit of off-spec rackets especially with swing weight that uh, the manufacturers they don't offer a swing weight guarantee which I, I complain about in my previous video I think and I will keep complaining about it because I think that's something that we should be assured when we buy a racket that we don't get like a crazy swing weight uh, that's way above what should be for a club level player. Um, so that's something I'm going to keep talking about. And that was very nice that I got a very uh, spot on swing weight. I could add a little, a little bit of weight for my game, but most players will be happy with the 98. And it's a great competitor to a Blade 98 uh, of different generations. Uh, or a TF40 from Technifiber as a, or an ESO 98 uh, from Yonex. So this frame deserves to be compared with, with the bigger brands for sure. It's, it's a very nice racket. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of fancy tech but still plays great. So perhaps tennis rackets, they don't really need all that stuff that they, they're talked about. Perhaps only if they are very stiff and powerful. But if you don't need a lot of free power, then uh, you can just take this kind of high modulus graphite frame and enjoy it. I hope you got something out of this review. I really enjoyed it and I will keep playing with the 98 for sure. If you want to read more about Hazel Rackets, check out their website hazel.com. Uh, you can also read my review on tennisner.net or listen to my podcast with Jeffrey Yeh 
from Hazel uh, could be an interesting listen for you. And also appreciate every like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube, Instagram, podcast, or wherever you will find Tennis Nerd. Also, um, enjoy uh, helping players find the right gear for them through my racket consultation. More info on tennisnerd.net. Uh, 65 star reviews now, so it's moving in the right direction. And uh, you get more content and you know more ahead of everyone else on patreon.com slash tennis nerd. Blah, blah, blah. Lots of talk. And, uh, but let's take a break and have a nice day. And I hope you can now go out and play some tennis. Take care, everyone. Okay. 